Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to tell you about location patterns of manufacturing industries in Tunisia. Uh, the literature on agglomeration economies shows that firms enjoy positive externalities from, from concentration of economic activities in a particular region. In most countries, concentration is too great to be random. Uh, concentration is indeed determined by the complex interaction of many factors. We broadly distinguish between three main categories of factors. The first category is what we call first nature causes. These concern concentration attributed to natural cost advantages, including um, the proximity to the sea, the characteristics linked to, to the physical landscape, uh, the abundance of natural resources, favorable climate conditions, and so on. The second category is what we call second nature causes or the home market effect. These concern concentration attributed to the interaction between economic agents. They are divided into agglomeration forces operating via uh, factors of production, including physical and knowledge spillovers and labor market pooling and agglomeration forces operating via goods related to demand and cost linkages. The third category is the, is the in-between category is what might be called economic infrastructure. They include local public goods such as transport networks and factor endowments such as industry specific skills. Let's introduce briefly agglomeration economies. A common classification of agglomeration economies distinguishes between localization and urbanization effects. Localization effects cause a high concentration of firms of the same industry. This, uh, this is assimilated to externalities of specialization. And urbanization effects lead to clusterings of firms of many different industries. This is assimilated to externalities of diversity. Both localization and urbanization effects can be divided into static and dynamic externalities. Dynamic externalities arise from technological and knowledge spillovers, and static externalities include natural cost advantages, um, local public goods, factor endowments, uh, and pecuniary externalities related to demand and cost linkages. Both static and dynamic externalities explain the existing location of firms, but only dynamic externalities account for economic growth. In this presentation, I will try to shed some lights on broad spatial location patterns of the main manufacturing industries in Tunisia. My investigation will be based on three empirical studies and on general information about uh, the characteristics of the various cities and main manufacturing industries involved. I will tackle mainly three issues. I will first answer the most crucial question of whether manufacturing industries indeed are, are indeed agglomerated in Tunisia. Uh, second, I will try to identify the main factors accounting for specialization patterns. And finally, I will try to suggest few facts about urbanization patterns based mostly on stylized facts, given that most studies have been conducted on the developed world, mainly on US cities, so we still know very little about the developing world. Uh, sorry. The three studies, the three empirical studies have mainly focused on testing whether dynamic externalities account for economic growth. They use data on Tunisian coastal governorates and delegations and the main manufacturing industries involved are divided into mature industries, including textile industries, leather and shoes industries, and agro-food industries, and knowledge-intensive industries, including chemical industries, electric and electronic industries, and metal, uh, mechanical and metallurgical industries. Let's start with the first issue. Manufacturing industries are indeed agglomerated in Tunisia. Uh, mature industries are agglomerated along the whole coastal line. Uh, leather and shoes industries are concentrated in the northeast region, notably in the governorates of Bizert and Nabel. Textile industries are concentrated in the center east, in the governorate of Monastir. And agro-food industries are concentrated both in the northeast, in the governorate of Nabel, and the center east in the governorate of Sfax, the second central business district in the country. 
while knowledge intensive industries are mainly concentrated in the northeast region, precisely in the governorate of Ben Arus, one of the four governorates of the Great Tunis. Now let's move to the second issue where I investigate specialization patterns. I will try in particular to broadly assess the importance of knowledge spillovers for each sector whenever it's possible. I start with mature industries. First, textile industries. This sector is less dependent upon local resources. It is one of the most exporting sectors in the country. And moreover, specialization is reinforced by foreign direct investment. Uh, the governorate of Monastir is, is characterized by its skilled labor pool specialized in textile due to the local transfer of knowledge from one generation to the next. It is also characterized by its good transport networks, including an, inter an international airport, and by its research infrastructure, including a competitiveness center specialized in textile. In this, for this sector, it may be possible to broadly assess the importance of knowledge spillovers, uh, which prevail based on empirical studies, mainly those using labor productivity-based regressions. And moreover, based on Ayedi and Matusi, uh, who found that 11% of new firms are created in Monastir, ranked the third after the two central business districts, Tunis and Sfax. And moreover, most of new firms created at the national level are in the textile sector. This may suggest the likely importance of knowledge spillovers for these industries. One may then conclude that concentration of textile industries in Monastir is mainly attributable to skilled labor pool, to strong forward linkages mainly related to large foreign demand, and to the likely important knowledge spillovers. Now let's move to the second sector, leather and shoes industries. This sector is largely dependent on tanned leather, so tanneries is a crucial segment in the industry. Specialization is largely impulsed by foreign direct investment in the proportion of 70%, according to Karai and Dries. And moreover, the Tunisian production is largely linked to the international market. Indeed, more than 95% of firms export 100% of their output. As for the two governorates, Nabel and Bizer, they are characterized by their proximity to tanneries, at least two, and to the most important ports in the country, the port of Rades for Nabel and the port of Bizer for Bizer, reducing thereby shipping goods to foreign consumers. Uh, given that specialization in this sector is largely impulsed by foreign direct investment, the question which arises, why foreign direct investment does not favor the location of the governorate of Sfax, though it has similar characteristics as the first two governorates with its two tanneries at, and its important port, the second in the country. The answer is likely due mainly to two reasons. First, the attractiveness of the first two governorates, um, the beauty of their landscape, their mild weather, also for their touristic infrastructure, especially for the case of Nabal. And the second reason is the weak attractiveness of Sfax to foreign direct investment for many reasons, uh, including its poor international accessibility. Uh, Sfax also exhibits these economies quite common to large towns and uh, to central business districts. And uh, it is also a quite capitalistic governorate. One may then conclude that concentration of leather and shoes industries is mainly attributable to input sharing to strong forward linkages, mainly related to large foreign demand, to the physical geography, the attractiveness of the city, to environment quality of life, and also to the, uh, to the prevalence of knowledge spillovers based on empirical studies, though it's not clear whether they are important or not here. Now let's move to the last mature in this, uh, sector, agro-food industries. This is a resource-intensive sector. So the question which arises, shall we expect agro-food firms to concentrate more in governorates having natural cost advantages or in those contributing the most to, uh, to the agricultural production at the national level? This sector is known to, uh, is known to serve mainly the local market. Now let's describe the two governorates, starting with Nabal, which is characterized by its natural cost advantages, including climate conditions and land favorable for growing high value farm uh, goods, including citrus fruits, grapes, and strawberries. Uh, 
Uh, NABEL is also characterized by its factor endowments, including its skilled labor pool due to the transfer of know-how from the Andalusians since the 16th century, and also to the availability of water resources due to the transfer of water from the Northwest region, a region well endowed with water resources through the Medjerda Caban Canal. Uh, Nabal is also characterized by its proximity to a technology park specialized in plant biotechnology, water, and environment, and by its large market size and large local demand, including strong seasonal touristic demand. One may then conclude that concentration of agro-food industries in the governorate of Nabal is mainly attributable to natural cost advantages, climate conditions plus land, to factor endowments, skilled labor pool plus availability of water resources, to important pecuniary externalities related to demand and cost linkages, and also to the prevalence of knowledge spillovers, though we cannot assess their importance here. As for the governorate of Sfax, concentration of agro-food firms there is attributable more to factor endowments and to strong uh, agglomeration forces operating via goods than to natural cost advantages. As for uh, agglomeration forces operating via goods, similarly to the case of Nabels, Fax is characterized by its large market size and large local demand. Indeed, more than 80% of its agro-food firms serve the local market. As for its factor endowments, in addition to its skilled labor pool, as in the case of Nabel, Sfax is characterized by, an important, by its important financial capacities, allowing its investors to exploit economic policies which provide subsidies to encourage the cattle farming sector despite its poor grazing land. Uh, now let's move now let's move to knowledge intensive industries which are mainly located in the governorate of Benarus. Uh, all what we can say or the most important we can say about these sectors is that one of these sectors, notably electric and electronic industries, is the first exporting sector in the country. As for the governorate of Benarus, it is characterized by its skilled labor pool with high human capital, partly generated by its quite important research infrastructure, including two technology parks specialized in biotechnology and pharmaceutical industries, among other things, and also an aerospace center. Uh, Benarus is also characterized by its well-designed industrial zones, where a non-negligible portion of knowledge and, uh, intensive in the, uh, industri industry uh, firms are located. Uh, Benarus is one of the four governorates of the Great Tunis, so it is characterized by its proximity to the first central business district, Tunis, meaning quite large land and housing prices, so the location of knowledge intensive industries there is probably for the important knowledge spillovers which are likely to be more than enough to make up the high costs. One may then conclude that concentration of knowledge intensive industries in Benarus is mainly attributable to industry specific spillovers, mostly knowledge spillovers, to factor endowments, uh, including skilled labor pool with high human capital and well designed industrial zones, and to a lesser extent to forward linkages related to foreign demand for the aforementioned sector. Now I, I will suggest a few facts about urbanization patterns. First, it is well known in the literature that new firms generally locate in diverse environments. In Tunisia, the largest portions of new firms are located, are created in the two central business districts, Tunis and Sfax. One may then conclude that Tunis and Sfax are two diversified governorates. As for Tunis, there is an empirical evidence about this fact. As for, as for Sfax so far, this fact is only based on observed patterns. Second, though larger cities tend to be more diversified, there is, however, a weak correspondence between city size and diversity. Benarus and Tunis are the most diversified governorates in the country. However, Benarus is more diversified, but smaller than Tunis. After this investigation, one may come up with the following conclusions. First, the main manufacturing industries are all concentrated in Tunisia. 
Second, labor market pooling is the most important agglomeration mechanism at work for both mature and knowledge-intensive industries, suggesting that industries partly locate in specialized environments to share a common pool of specialized workers. Second, uh, according to several studies, localization effects are low and urbanization effects are high in knowledge-intensive industries. This is not the case of Tunisia, where both effects are high in knowledge-intensive industries. Indeed, Benaros, the most diversified governorate, is also the most specialized in knowledge-intensive industries, suggesting that the most important agglomeration mechanisms at work are labor market pooling and knowledge spillovers. Uh, the fourth conclusion, there are no clear patterns for the correspondence between city size and specialization in Tunisia. Indeed, several patterns coexist. First, Medium-sized cities, the case of Bizert and large cities, the case of Monastir, are specialized more in mature sectors and less in knowledge-intensive uh, industries. The second pattern, large cities, the case of Benarus, are specialized more in knowledge-intensive industries and less in mature industries. And the last pattern, medium-sized cities, the case of Sfax, and large cities, the case of Nabal, are specialized in both, knowledge, uh, in both mature and knowledge-intensive industries. And I finish with the last conclusion. It is well known in the literature that urbanization effects are high in central business districts. This is the case of Tunisia, where the two central business districts, districts Tunis and Sfax, are diversified. However, they exhibit different agglomeration patterns. While Sfax is both diversified and uh, specialized, Tunis is diversified but has no single manufacturing industry. We should be here very cautious in drawing conclusions in general because this might not be the case if we consider service industries. Thank you very much for your attention.